is one of the top coaches. Take, take the young qualification out of it, right? I think you're he, right. You yes, go. well, he is aging a little bit now. Yeah, All right, he's catching up to some people. <laughs> Paladins in the Grays, Sanford in the road. Navies were underway, expecting a near capacity crowd here in Timmins Arena coming off a sold out game Saturday when the Paladins knocked off Western thanks to that Pagish three. The tap underway and it's controlled by the Bulldogs. The Sanford team, Richmond, you like it. To get up and down the court, as you mentioned, averaging over 90 points a game, the Paladins above 81. So it's really not a contrast of styles. It's who's going to do it better in the easy two-handed slam by a core core. And this is what we're talking about, just how bouncy he is, a chore chore from Australia. Very athletic and get to the rim so fast. And you talked about averaging 90 points per game. It's leading the country in scoring offense with Kentucky losing to South Carolina last night and only scoring 62 points. Williams off the mark, half court man to man for the Paladins. Chor Chor kicks it back up. Thought about the three. Off the front of the rim, this Bulldog team very good from behind the arc. Above 40% from long range. Furman above 31%. That's going to be an offensive foul going against the Paladins. Crowd doesn't like it. Off hand on Alex Williams. That's an early first person. Yeah, and that's a tough one right there for Alex Williams as he had a tough time corralling the rebound and just trying to get down the court and when you have a veteran guy like Riley Jones or uh, Dallas Graziano I should say being able to defend you there just being that little pass and you could see Alex Williams just with a little bit of the elbow reaching up and called for the offensive foul. There you see the Bulldogs starting five Von Secours presenting Campbell State McCray Graziani Accor and Jones the five on the court for the Bulldogs. Graziani sends it back out eight on the shot clock. Pump fake, nice pass down low, wide open. And a quick 4 nothing lead for the Bulldogs. And here's that full court pressure designed to speed up the pass. This is Bucky Ball, as we always have heard about it, just the non-stop suffocating defense. But how do you answer that? You counter that with a big shot, and Alex Williams knocks it down. Williams. Beyond the arc. Over 40% from long range, Richmond averaging over 16 a game. He's really come on over the last two, three weeks after Christmas and become lights out. And one of the main guys from the victory. That shot short, rebound by Huey. There's some questions whether Tyrese Huey was going to play tonight as he was banged up as that pass easily intercepted. Turnovers leading to point, Ryland Jones. But Huey turned an ankle late in that win over Western Carolina. Didn't play much of the second half, but he's out there. We'll see taped up a bit. Already one turnover here in the early going. Richmond victim to the press. That's right, and you got to be able to protect the ball. And that's why Alex Williams was such a catalyst in that victory, as I was trying to say, against Western Carolina on Saturday. And he's going to be relied upon in this game also. Williams again. When he sees it go down early, watch out. He's two of two when the pound is at six. Crowd coming alive. Has some energy here early all the way down the lane. No one cuts it off. Dallas Graziani, the sophomore to Pembroke Prize, Florida. And that right there is we've seen Carter Witt has some exceptional gains from the defensive standpoint, being named defensive player of the game twice already this season, but allowed Graziano to turn his hips right there and, and get to the rim. Second turnover for the Paladins, that pop from behind. See a core trying to get position on Huey. They got the size advantage down there. If they can get some post up down low, here comes Jones. And Huey's going to get called for the foul, his first team second. So both these teams, Richard, would like to go fast. And you take a look at the keys to the game presented by BMW. Get back, handle the pressure, and then you talk about defend the three. Well, you got you to gotta pick the battles. And you've seen right now that they haven't been able to defend the three, and that's where you can see Sanford struggles defending the three, allowing some teams almost 40% from beyond the arc. And you can't force the offense. They are prone to some turnovers, and we've got to see – Furman be able to handle that type of pressure, that bucky ball, that non-stop suffocating defense that we have seen each year. Put trigger three on the way, air ball off the mark. Good defense there. Not a bad look, but right on him. That's a tough shot right there, and I think what you're seeing from Furman right now is they're extending that defensive pressure out and doing a really good job of making Sanford work some clog. This is a team, Sanford Bulldogs, they get a shot off within the 14 seconds of the shot clock on average, so they're going to go fast, and they want to get out in transition, as you see Rylan Jones bringing it up. Furman missed the three there, got an open look, beat the pressure. Furman 2 of 4 here in the early going. There's Stant McCray, leaves it short, offense or make a defensive rebound. Marcus Foster. 
trailing Pagese over to Foster into the lane. Leaves it off to Heen, and he's going to be fouled. Nice job there by Foster, not forcing it over the taller core, 6'9", and he will go to one. Yeah, this is an opportunity right now. As you see, Berman really wanted to move the ball, have proper spacing. You see dribble penetration right there in the dish off for Marcus Foster. Having an opportunity of giving up a good shot for a potential greater shot. Heen at the line, struggles on the year. Knocks down the first. Furman as the team shoots the ball well from the line. Over 70% Heen, though, are there just under 40 as Carter Witt comes out. P.J. Smith in for the first time. Transfer out of Laverne's Tennessee. Heen looking to tie it up. That one's off the mark. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs have left from the tip here in the early going. Their largest lead has been four as we approach the opening media timeout. Stanton McCray. You see Furman switching those ball screens up top, and it's going to be out of bounds. They're going to say, same for basketball when we come back. We expect streak, and winning a lot of those games, Richmond, decisively. Series history, though. Furman with the advantage pretty decisively overall. And I tell you what, how big was that last one in Birmingham? Furman went in, sold out, knocked off the Bulldogs, took the number one seed in the conference tournament, ended up winning the conference tournament. Yeah, and that was a opportunity to follow up the overtime victory that Furman had here in Greenville, but what a performance from Mike Bothwell scoring 18 consecutive points, the first 18 points for Furman in that big victory down in Birmingham to clinch the number one seed. Well, tipped away, Pagis in the backcourt. You see how quick Graziani is trying to pester that Furman backcourt. And it's the Bucky ball, it is about pressure, but it's how he does it as a team, how they're so connected defensively and how everybody knows their assignments. And that's what makes it so difficult, and that's why they can turn teams over. Foster, triple team down low, goes up off the front of the rim. Tried to kick it out, couldn't do there. Allen Spock with the rebound, the freshman out of Charlotte. Hand in his face, Hicks will take a three. That one's well short, offensive board. Stanton McCray down the lane. He goes up, can't get it to go. Offensive board, no. Third opportunity, that one can't. Three times right around the rim, can't go down. Furman grabs the board. Tell you what, you see Stanton McRae all over Pagese. Heen, top of the key, fast and furious we go. Smith's three is on the way. The Paladins got their first lead at 10 to 8. And P.J. Smith, great job right there. Had his feet set, shoulders square, and went straight up. Didn't hesitate. We've seen some hesitation at times. Is this a good shot or not? And right there, really good shot. In rhythm, solid foundation, and knocks it down. Herman 3 of 5 here in the early going from long range. Bulldogs, you mentioned, above 40%, looking for their first. Alan Spock trying to change that off the mark of Pagese with the board. Furman out quickly. Smith's going to stop. Pop on the way off the front of the rim. Short offensive board. Follows his own shot. And Furman to reset the offense. Over to Foster. Quick three. That one's off the mark. So Furman, two good looks at it. Couldn't knock it down. But good movement with the ball there. As you can see, Vanderwall trying to swing it around. And see JP, a quick pass to Marcus Foster. Just missed it. You're pouring off the mark. Bulldogs now three minutes without a bucket or their last nine from the field. You'll think Coach McMillan will like those shots. Just not falling early. Slip down low. Foster grabs it. Goes reverse. Can't make the layup out of bounds. will stay with Furman. So both teams, Richmond, down low. A couple point blank misses. Yeah, and you can see that both teams are trying to focus on getting some points in the paint. We've got right now... Bulldogs there for Sanford, eight points in the paint. They've been doing a really good job of getting some easy shots. And I know head coach Bob Ritchie is trying to tell his team got to defend inside the paint there and not give up some easy opportunities. Mean backdoor cut, Vanderwall reverse layup. Cut on the easy opportunity right there for him up four. When you have a defensive team like Sanford, one thing that you can rely on is back cuts. And they over pursue, and we saw Ben Vanderwall be able to do that. But as we talked about a chore, chore, he's just so difficult to defend because he's so quick, he's so athletic and long. How about the big fella putting it on the court? Here takes it from the top of the key, down, and he saw an exasperated Furman bench. And somebody's got to cut that dribble off. And he can knock it down from beyond the arc, too. He's put score from multiple levels. Vanderwall with the chance for the end one, the hit from behind. And Where's the contradiction of the pressure if Furman's able to beat it with passing? 
Pucky Ball is going to keep the pressure on, but how do you adjust to Furman attacking it? Well, we know one thing just from a perspective of what is faster. Passes are faster than dribbling. So when Furman can move the ball through passing, they're going to have an opportunity to create some open looks, and especially then you can have some cutting action. And one of the best guys on Furman's team who understands the ability to cut, that's Ben Vanderwall, as we saw him get to the basket there, just missed the opportunity for the three-point play. Four-point Furman lead ties their largest. The Bulldogs opened up with a 4 nothing lead to start the game. That was stripped. Going up with it was Johnson. Furman the other way. With, with the basketball, looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Tough jumper, knocks it down. Carter Witt, a player that's really evolved. Just from what we saw with Carter Witt last year, sometimes being in the proverbial doghouse with head coach Bob Ritchie, but you just see how this firm in culture just seems to develop players, and Carter Witt's playing with a different level of confidence this year, and you can see it not only in his game, but in the results. Smith pulls it away, reverse layup, no. Rebound, Vanderwall gets it, and Furman a reset. Nice job by the Bulldogs getting back, but the turnover stands. Well, it's because Ben Vanderwall is somehow in the middle of plays time and time again. Williams contested jumper. I don't know if that's the shot Firm is looking for early in the shot clock. He can hit him, but he's got to move the ball. It, not only that, early in the shot clock, but he's fading away. He's not going up strong. And you've got to be able to continue focus on going up strong on those shots. Aggressive defense. Williams has that one personal, but wants to be careful. Witt goes for the steal. Not there. Going to create an opening, and the runner in the lane's good. That's Josh Holloway, the freshman out of Memphis. Yeah, and Josh Holloway is, Holloway is a guy who came out of Oak Hill Academy and is very talented. And the guy you'll probably know the name pretty quickly here in the Southern Conference. You see, again, the transition. The Chor Chor can run the floor with the best of them. Quick for a run for the Bulldogs after the turnover. Cooper Bowser, the big freshman in for the Paladins. What? Cutting baseline, contact, no call, tipped around into the hands of the Bulldogs, out of bounds, and it will be same for basketball. Fast and furious we go. Williams, Witt, Foster, Bowser in for the Paladins along with J.P. Pagese. Holloway runs the offense for this Sanford team, averaging over 90 points a game. Foster comes in, ties him up, and it's going to be Furman basketball on the jump ball. You see the help defense really making an impact early. A, a big opportunity right there to showcase that as you see a double team come. Once the offensive player has established that he no longer has a dribble, and that was a great job right there by Furman, calls in the jump ball and ultimately getting possession themselves. Huey at the table, he'll check in next dead mall. Half court, heavy pressure man to man for this Sanford team. Shot clock down to 10, Bowser comes out and set a screen. Gets it back at the free throw line, big against big. Bowser does everything but make it. Had good positioning, just couldn't finish as a core went under the basket. Point blank miss for the Paladins, far side Holloway, three on the way, air ball into the hands of Witt. Bulldogs struggling from behind the arc early. Witt looking to go coast to coast, out to a wide open Pagese off the mark. Offensive board, back to one more, thought about it. And the offensive rebounds for the Paladins adding up here in the early going, that's already five. And that was Carter Witt right there. You could see how he was able to push the ball down the floor, led to a wide open shot by JP, just not able to hit it, but then it's Carter Witt being able to get the rebound and an unforced error right there though. Three on one behind the back off the glass and in by Campbell. We're tied up at 16. Furman turnovers leading to Sanford points. Furman scoreless now for the last three minutes. See how quickly Sanford likes to get out and run. Pagese trying to go all the way down. Shot altered. And here comes the Bulldogs. 6 0 run. A chance to take the lead back here midway through the opening half. Uh, tipped away into the hands of Foster. Allen is trying to end a brief scoring drought. Three of eight from beyond the arc. The Bulldogs, 0 of six. Bowser is going to get called. Wave it off. There's going to be a blocking foul down low before the shot. Just the third team sign. So shot clock goes to 20, and Huey will come back in, as well as Stanton McRae and Graziani for Sanford. 
Yeah, and I think we look at this replay right here, and with Rylan Jones is the inside the restricted art here. Art, yeah, he's on the line there, so it's going to be an automatic blocking foul right there as Bowser is able to get a few minutes in there and have an opportunity to understand level of play here in the Southern Conference when you have two heavyweights like this is a little bit different than it was in high school. So it's an opportunity for him to adjust and get a feel for the speed of this game. Bowser comes in averaging around 13 minutes a game. William gets it down low. Shot clock down to one. McGee's hand in his face on the way off the mark. Ball tipped around. It'll be the Bulldogs basketball. Berman late in the shot clock. Had to hoist one up. Graziani flips it down low. Ball poked away. He'll stay with the Bulldogs. And the I don't think the shot clock is back at 30. I don't think it'll reset. They may need to take a look at it. I do think they need to take a look at that because that was not as, yeah, there, there you go. They did switch that back to 17 seconds there on the shot clock. That's good defense there by Furman. And again, holding to Sanford to have, making them use some shot clock here and not allowing them to get into high paced transition offense. Ball up, out of bounds, and kind of a combination between a shot and a pass there, trying to get it down low on the block. What it does is the difference in a live ball turnover and a dead ball turnover, as you take a look there, is trying. And watch this defense right here. J.P. Pegues making sure he does not allow the defender. He stays the defender in front of him and leads to that turnover. That is absolutely picture-perfect defensive pressure right there. One-on-one -on -one defense by J.P. Pegues. And it might not show up on the stat sheet that he got a steal, but he did cause that turnover right there. That ball take us to the under eight media timeout. Scoring slowed down between these two teams, averaging up behind 80 points plus a game. His last touch, they're going to say, oh, Stanton McCray got a handle on it. Furman catches a break on a tough pass. 10 on the shot clock. We'll be palling in basketball when we come back. 16 all here from Timmons. Have everybody back. Won four in a row in the league to a team that was picked to win the conference, and everybody's saying, oh, I wish I would have gotten the Paladins early. Yeah, of course they did. And this is a team that you look back last year, six games into the Co Southern Conference standings, Berman was four and two. So there's really not much different other than, obviously, yes, you do not have Mike Bothwell or Jalen Slauson out there. But this is a Furman team that's starting to get things together, as you talked about. They're finally healthy and can have a foundation of a stable rotation. They haven't been able to have that in any of the games this year up until the past three. Pegues from the elbow off the mark. Furman still scoreless now nearly for five minutes, but still knotted up at 16. Tipped into the backcourt. Shot clock back to 30. Both teams came out hot offensively. Williams, two of two, now three of three. Alex Williams, and Coach Richie says all day, got to move the basketball, kick it out, and Williams with the hot hand. So many times we talk about when you are wanting to push the pace, one way to be able to do that, you also have to have proper spacing, especially when you have to get into your half-court offense. And we've seen a great job by Furman being able to do that and finding Alex Williams with the big three. Foul down low. Furman wanting the push off. Not there. It's going to be the first or third team foul. First on Pagese and two coming up at the line for Cora Cora, who pretty good and above 71% on the season. Now, both these coaches, Bucky McMillan, I'm a successful, Bob Rich is successful. Go back to. Back to legendary coaches, and, and obviously Bob Knight comes to mind. Passionate, energetic. They can get on their kids, but they do it from such an angle of you love them, and you love them so much, you're willing to challenge them in ways. And because, and you can argue, was Bob Knight's approach right? The fundamental of I'm going to coach my kids hard and fight for them kind of comes through a little bit in these coaches. Well, and I think part of it too is that you start seeing that come through with the development of these players and why they want to stay in this program when now we're in that transfer portal era. If it was so much adversity, these guys would be transferring out, but they're not. They're staying here like a guy, Marcus Foster, who continues to develop from last year to this year and part of the leadership council for the Furman Paladins and to stay mainstay for Furman. Foster at the line. You know, speaking of Bobby Knight, some of the most identifiable 
college basketball is the, you know, the striped warm-up pants. You look good in some red and white stripes. Oh, yes, hey. You know, you got a pair. <laughs> I need some. I haven't worn something like that in a long time. Because you have to love the buttons, how you just slap, slap, slap them, them off. off. Yeah. Yes. You know, I know a couple folks that might have owned a pair back in their day. No longer have them. Four-point Furman lead. Both free throws knocked in. Largest lead has been four for the Bulldogs, opening up the ball game in a 4 0 run. Furman's led by as many as six and is taken away by Foster. Turnover is becoming a problem. That's now seven for Samford. And this is what we need Furman now. If you're Furman, you have to be able to convert those turnovers into points. Now you have an extra possession right here. And can you convert those turnovers into points? And unfortunately, you see Garrett Heen right there. He ran a marathon. With, down yes, the left he did. He was excited. He was excited to try to get to the rim there. But so far, when you look at turnovers, not all turnovers are created equal because you have to be able to utilize those turnovers and create points off of those. And Stanford's been able to do a good job of that. Eight points off of Furman turnovers tonight so far. Bulldogs now their turn for the scoring drought. Three minutes without a field goal. Furman 32% from the field. Bulldogs at 38%. So both struggling a bit offensively. And I think, Richmond, you got to credit to this. High pressured offense on both sides. A core, core, tough fadeaway jumper knocks it down. He now has nine approaching double digits. He's just so hard to defend. But as you talked about, some of the offensive woes for both teams and some of these droughts that they've had, you have to give the defense for each yeah. respective team credit because we know that it's connected defense is one of the things that both of these coaches preach. It's PJ Smith. Knocks down his second from long range, leading at five-point game. Furman, four of ten, 40% from the other. How about this Bulldog team? Above 40% coming in. They've yet to hit a three-pointer. Right, and we talked about one of the keys to the game for Sanford. They had to defend the three, and so far they've struggled with that against Furman. Foster with the crossover. Timeout, Sanford, as Timmons comes to their... Getting easy open shots from beyond the arc, but... We have seen Samford being able to utilize their strength with a chore chore in the paint, and they've been able to do a good job of getting points in the paint. After the timeout, Bulldog basketball. Furman's lead's gone up to 11, and after the timeout, trying to get it down low, Garrett Heen anticipates and steals. Tell you what, even on the steal, Samford immediately jumps into the full court press and almost forces a turnover. Loose ball picked up. Furman beats it. 2-0-1 to the corner. Foster, can he hit it? Yes! Place alive in Greenville, almost a turnover. Now we have a double-digit lead. And that's the epitome right there of Furman basketball, to be able to almost be out of control, chaotic type of situation and still manage to get a three-point shot and knock it down by Marcus Foster there. But we see, again, Josh Holloway being able to get into the lane there for Sanford and get an easy two. And you see the Bulldogs, they're not backing out from pressure there, Furman. Turns it over for the sixth time. So not to be sheltered. Furman beats the pressure, gets a three. And now it's going to be a travel on the help defense. But we said neither of these teams are going to change their styles. You don't see Bucky McMillan saying, hey, we're going to back off the pressures, lead to open looks. But he did a turnover the right next time down the court. He has been that coach all the way to his high school days where he won multiple state championships and two of them at the highest level in Alabama. He's a mainstay in the city of Birmingham. And one of the reasons why he's been such a successful coach is that he believes in one philosophy and he sticks to it. And right now, they're still continuing to create some turnovers. They just haven't been able to get in the offensive rhythm that we have seen them as the leading the nation in scoring, averaging 90 points per game. Full court pressure. Whit gets the inbound. And Furman's been able to beat it with passing. You see that ball barely hit the court, and there's the trans transition. You know, you're able to beat it. you got to start moving quickly as Whit has it knocked away. That's one of the Spin. things as coaches we always talk about. To beat the press, you got to pass ahead of the press. Keen with the loose ball, two-handed jam. Second chance points. Now 10 for the Paladins in this first half. We go under four in this near sold out Timmins Arena. What is the last season as it currently stands before renovations come in a lot? Talk about one of the best atmospheres, not just Southern Conference, but mid major basketball right here in Green It's absolutely fantastic. And this is what you want Southern Conference basketball, mid major, two heavyweights here this Wednesday night with Sanford and.
Furman, and it is electric right now as the Paladins are trying shot to create clock. more turnovers. And they do. Can they throw it away, though, into the front court? Williams runs it down, runs right into core, core block. A little bit out of control. Furman wanted a call. Quickly back the other way. Hicks stops, pops. Off the mark. Can't get it off its board. Thrown away. He'll be Paladin basketball. Listen to this crowd. Media timeout. A Wednesday night. Furman is being able to fly right now. And that's one of the reasons why Furman has this 10-point lead. Pegues can't make the layup. Furman almost looked like had a set play out of the break on that pressure. Nice job defending core core right on the rim against Pegues. Bulldogs still without a three. Low of seven. Down low with his walls hard off the glass and in. Back to an eight-point game. And again, points in the paint right there. Sanford just living in the paint being able to get some baskets and Pagese on the inbound loses it again just the pesky pressure that's consistent drives the turnover Bulldogs chance to cut into this lead here the last 249 of the half it just wears on you in a rare scenario right there with JP Pagese with the turnover he's such a good ball handler Bulldogs looking for back-to-back -back buckets and the largest lead had been 10, the Bulldogs at four. Three high, arching on the way. That one's off the mark, off the top of the backboard. It'll be Furman basketball. You like that shot? From a chore, chore, he can knock it down. 51% from long range. He doesn't take a whole lot, but he's very efficient. And that's what the main thing, when you look at a chore, chore, he is so efficient. He averages only 20 minutes per game. But in the conference play right now, he's averaging 22 points per game. So this guy knows how to score in a quick manner. Pegues, three seconds to cross the timeline, gets it to Williams. Williams then comes, has it stripped, and I think they're going to get Alex Williams on the foul, and it's going to be his second personal and the team's four. So a decision to make for Furman if you pull Williams out with those two, and it looks like they will. Yeah, I think they will. Just from perspective, you know that second half's going to be a long second half physical. You need Alex Williams, such as what we saw in that Western Carolina game. There was a five-minute stretch in the second half where Alex Williams just took over. I mean, it was rebound after rebound for Alex Williams. You can see right here, Rylan Jones. the left-hand pull. Yeah, I mean, he's just a veteran guy, Rylan Jones. I mean, this is a, a grad student who transferred from Utah played there for two years and then also Utah State so this guy has been around college basketball for a long time size advantage ball sent out top of the key 10 on the shot clock here's Hicks nowhere to go seven to shoot walls just launches one off the mark rebound battle for by Foster and that's about as good of a defensive possession as you can ask for for a pallet it made Samford run the shot clock there use a lot of clock I should say and then able to force them into a very difficult shot. Pagese open three off the back of the rim. Had a good look at it. Pagese now 0 of three from long range. Bulldogs have an opportunity here. Furman no points in the last three minutes to try to crawl closer. Core Core can't miss it. Had the layup. Gets his own rebound is good. And it's a six point game now with 90 seconds to go in the half. And he leads the team in points and rebounds and it's just so hard to defend. PJ Smith for three. Furman now going cold. And a 10-point lead at one point, the Bulldogs crawling closer. If you're Sanford, you're thinking, okay, it was 10. Still haven't hit a three. Score here, very manageable going into the half, still with a minute to go. Dribble handoff, top of the key. Ball taken away, and then a foul going against Ryland Jones. It's going to be the sixth Bulldog foul. Furman really troubling those dribble handoffs. Yeah, and that's a great job of being able to defend over the top of those screens that are coming there and sometimes even switching. So Furman's doing a really good job of making it very difficult for the guards. And they, this is a Sanford team that they've got four lead ball handlers on this team that, that they are very well experienced from that standpoint and typically do a great job of dribble penetration, but Furman's making them work really hard here in this first half. Sanford already 11 deep in the line. I mean, you would expect them to play a lot with the style they play. The effort exerted, Furman going nine deep as Foster going to stay a foul before the wall. Bucky McMillan wanted to travel. It's going to be a foul, the 17 foul, so a one and one coming up for Marcus Foster who shoots 78% on the season for the line. We're taking another look, just a little bit late getting there in the hand check going against Nathan Johnson. That's right, Nathan Johnson just there in the 
wrong place at the wrong time picking up the foul. And you talk about how many players play for Sanford. This is a team that they get a lot of production from their bench. You get 37 points per game on average from the bench, which is sixth in the nation, first in the conference. So this is a team with a rotation. Bucky McMillan, he's not afraid to rotate a lot of guys in and get valuable minutes. Furman, three of five from the line, make it four of six. Bulldogs have gone to the line twice, made one of them. It's Jaden Campbell, the senior out of Bramden, Ontario, in for the Bulldogs. Foster can't get the second, but a whistle. He's going to get Tyree Huey on the push, trying to rebound, just a 15 foul. The second on Huey, and you see one of the Paladin assistants up there saying, hey, that's going to be two. Chad Warner letting everybody know, so Huey to check out and try not to foul and pick up that third with the last 54 seconds of the half. And we're standing right, we're sitting right here. We could hear Bob Ritchie telling Tyrese Huey, do not foul, do not foul. Huey dribble up top. Graziani in the lane, step out three on the way. That's short. Bulldogs still without a three. That one's ball saved into the corner. Now Whip, nine second differential shot and game clock, but Furman wants to go quick. Foster down the lane, up, can't get it to go. Back up, no. Loose ball, ball tipped out. And now the Paladins want to hold. They want to stay shot, but there's still going to be a six second differential shot and game clock. 10 on the shot clock, 18 on the game clock. Pekis one on one. Working against Campbell. Lines are cutting Foster. Foster down low. Left hand to finish is good. Nine point lead. Shot clock turned off. Quickly into the front quarters. This is where the Bulldogs will crack the three. Campbell down low. Fadeaway jumpers up. No good. And a nine point Furman lead into the half here in Greenville. Complex game when you break it down. And both of these teams are going to continue to push the pace. We know that. Score might not be indicative as far as how much these teams want to get up and transition offense, but we know they can, both of them, get hot at any moment. So Chor trying to post up down low early, miscommunication. He went for a screen and Heen has it. Heen into the front court, finds a cutting wit, has it blocked, pass back, and it's intercepted. Missed opportunity there for the Paladins. Good job, Sam, for getting back. Yeah, those are those missed opportunities that you got to take advantage of against Sanford. Trying to go down low, reverse layup in, and that's exactly what the Bulldogs want to do early. Again, more points in the paint right there. A chore, chore about a guy who understands being able to use his body and use the rim to protect an opportunity of having his shot blocked. Great job right there. Dean, wide open at the elbow. Sanford going to give him the look. He gets it out the whip. Finds a cutting heen, goes for the one-handed jam and blocked. A lot of contact, no call. And Jordan gets it up top. The Bulldogs a chance to cut it down to five, sends it to the corner. Can they finally hit their first three? No, off the rim, battle for the rebound. And off the ball is going to be a foul. It looks like going against Alex Williams, and that's going to be his third. Yeah, we see a chore, chore right in the middle of it there. It continues to be a menace on both ends of the floor. Herman wanted to sub to get Alex Williams out of the game. So he's going to stay in there. There's three fouls until the next dead ball. There's the first three-pointer knockdown for the Bulldogs. Foster didn't get out there. And all of a sudden, a quick 5-0 run for Sanford to start this second half. And it's a 4 game, a four-point game. Yeah, and if there's a guy that can get hot, A.J. Stanton McRae, he's another veteran guy here, junior for the Bulldogs, averaging 13 points per game. But he's also shooting almost 50% from the field, from beyond the arc, I should say, as we see. Garrett Heen getting in the action right there, getting some points in the paint. Bulldogs coming out in the 2 3 zone, kind of daring Heen maybe to take it in the paint with the big fella standing at 6 9 defending. That one's off the mark. Law rebound taken by Whip. Ball sent up to Pergis. Can he finish? Yes, and he's back quickly to an eight point game at 38 30. And that's the vision of Carter Witt. He has an amazing vision, even from long situations and you're talking about long situations we see aj stanton mccray the second three-pointer open looks now i know he was deep but it's an opportunity where you've got to get out and defend and close out 
Quit taking it all the way down. Stanton McRae gets a hand on it. Turnover. You see the Furman Vince saying you got to get your hands up. Nice cutting Stanton McRae, though. Wasn't expecting the basketball. Didn't finish. Foster's turn into the front court. Goes right at the big fella. Can't finish. Ball tipped out, and it's going to be grabbed by the Bulldogs. Back and forth we go in a five-point affair early 20, second 20 minutes. And this is the track meet that we were talking about. Both teams getting up and down the court, just not able to finish some of the, the shots for both sides. Physical down low, sent to the corner. Three on the way, Campbell no. So Stanton McRae, the only one to knock it down, and Furman kind of wants to slow it down a bit offensively. Richie now says speed it up, sent to the corner. Pagese, quick fire three, yes. And there is the response with Richie Pagese. His first three, and it's an eight-point game. And as we talked about, when you need a big shot, you need a big play, J.P. Pegues is that guy. It doesn't matter if he's missed his last three shots, 15 shots, shoot or shoot. As we know, J.P. definitely is one of those guys. Be a whistle. And I think it's George, George, George. George looks banged up, and he's going to come out. That gets Vanderwood. Alex Williams played a long stretch there with those three fouls without fouling P.J. Smith in as well. And We'll see who Bucky McMillan wants to sub in with the chore chore hurt. Yeah, looks like he's going to go with Riley Allensbach there. True freshman out of Providence Day School, and his dad, Adam, played at Clemson, so he's got a family heritage. His uncle played at Davidson. Eight-point game. It was nine at the half. Bulldogs finally trying to open up from long range. Cut off. Jones looking for it out to Stanton McCray. He's knocked down those two threes. One to shoot. I don't think he got it off. That's going to be a shot clock violation. And the Paladin is forced to turn over. And you can see Marcus Foster did a much better job defending the perimeter out there, closing out, not letting Stanton McCray get that shot off because we've seen he's been able to knock a couple of three-pointers down here early in the second half to keep Sanford in this game. Here's the full court pressure. And there's the difference. Live ball, dead ball, turnover. Sanford can set up that pressure. P.J. Smith into the front court. Vanderwall now he. Bulldogs back into the man-to-man. -man. Look for a backdoor cut. It's going to be a kick ball. Furman catches a break. See Furman mixing it up. Sometimes they like to keep the pressure on, beating the press. Other times they'll slow it down around the offense. Well, and right there you can see Garrett Heen directing traffic, making sure proper spacing was right there. And Garrett Heen is a really good high post distributor right there as he was able to see the cutting Ben Vanderwall but just not able to get it through that small open. It's like Sanford back into the zone. Pegues far side looking for two in a row. He's got it. J.P. Pegues. He now has eight and it's all of a sudden an 11 point game. Back to back threes. Left corner, right corner. It doesn't matter. J.P. can knock it down. Time out after the air ball will be Paladin basketball. So the book to get better and better. So obviously losing in the in the tournament there. Yep. Can they advance even farther next year? Going up the frigid temperatures of yes. Montana on a Friday night. 44-33 Paladins. Just under 16 minutes going in the half. We'll keep you updated as we work through some technical difficulties on the score bug. And they're going to get Tyree Shuey on the offensive foul, his third, and the team second. So, again, the pressure working out of the timeout. Second time, Furman's got the offensive foul in the backcourt. And that's a tough scenario coming out of a timeout like that. You had some momentum, and then, unfortunately, the offensive foul leading to a turnover. And now you got to play, quickly play some defense. Down low, fight for the basket. Nice finish by a chore. He now has 15. And there's only so much Tyrese Huey can do right there because he's got his third foul. And so he has to just try to go up as straight up as he can and really can't be as physical as he would want to be there. And you have to be physical against a chore chore because he's just so good. Here comes that full court pressure. Smith picks up his dribble. Now Pagese to run it. Crosses the timeline, and now the Palins will set up the offense. The press has been effective. Or some pallet and turnovers. There's a kick ball. Turnovers for really both teams. Both teams with 13. Furman with 12 points off those. Sanford with 14. So they're making each other pay when they turn it over. They are. And that's what we saw early on is that Sanford was doing a really good job of converting the turnovers into points where Furman was having some missed opportunities. And they weren't able to convert those turnovers into points. But they have been able to do that. 
more in the, first, the second portion of that first half and now here early on in the second half. Flip pulls up, can't hit the elbow jumper. Carter Witt just two points. That was only a second shot attempt, though. On the night, hit its first. There's Stanton McCray in the lane, sends it far side, thought about a three. He's hit two of them. Can he hit a third? Yes, with a hand in his face. Stanton McCray heating up. He now has nine, and all of a sudden back to a six-point game. Yeah. Both teams with many runs. 47% shooter from beyond the arc. Again, probably just a matter of time for somebody for Sanford got hot. Pagese, can he answer? That's off the front of the rim. Rebound taken down by Jones. Pagese was looking for three in a row. All in the lane, and Stanton McCray wants the foul called, and he'll get it. It's going to be the third team foul here in the second half. That's going to go against Carter Witt. And you just see a little bit different type of confidence right now. His first team's third, as we mentioned. So just when you think, hey, Patton's back to a double-digit lead. Bulldogs responding. They can cut it to four, potentially three, if they hit another long one. Stanton McCray, he has them everything from beyond the arc. Viziani all the way down the left side, hesitates. Back out to Jones, shot clock at 12. Short driving on Huey. Sanford Bench wanted a bump, not called. Three on the way, nope, off the back around, but with the board. Went quickly into the front court, now Pagese. Trying to find a cutting Vanderwall who wasn't looking for the basketball and the pilot has turned it over. Maybe a good look there, just wasn't quite running. It, yeah, and I think that was a scenario where maybe JP tried a little too hard right there could have rolled that back out instead of forcing the issue. And we had Ben Vander, Furman had Ben Vanderwall right there. I don't think Ben was ready for that that pass, that no look pass from JP Pegues. Six point game. It was a nine point Furman lead at the half. Well, down low, trying to use the size advantage. Or turn around, finish. He has 17, making it look easy down low, and then Heen throws it away. Jumper on the way, rattles out. Oh, that was halfway down, and now a foul on Stanton McCray. Bulldogs bothering Furman in that full court press. Marcus Foster will check back in. Put 7 0 Bulldogs spurred over the last minute 40. We see a chore just continuing to be able to work inside the paint. He does look exhausted right now. He's playing so many minutes this is a guy who's averaging six points per game last year I mean, the transformation has been remarkable this season especially when you think about Sanford not having one of the best players in the conference Jermaine Marshall every time Bulldogs have got within a couple possessions Perma responded Foster double team Matt Smith in the corner can he hit it yes PJ Smith with a hand in his face his third three-pointer and you could just see that was just in such fluid motion right there being able to again square up his shoulders and his feet were set and easily knock down that three-point shot. Stanton McCray tried to stay hot. Furman pushes it up, able to beat the pressure. In about half the time you see Furman keep the pedal down, the other half they pull out and try to find a good shot. Furman's shooting 40%, the Bulldogs right at 39%. He trying to find somewhere to go with the basketball. Whit with seven to shoot. Into the lane, he'll throw a floater up halfway down. No, catch in by Vanderwall. He has six. So Furman with the quick 5 0 response after the Bulldogs have cut it to four. You would think a chore needs to get a look here. Stanton McGregor working against Foster. Kicks it to the corner, open look on the way Jones. He thought about it. Now Foster pokes it away, but he'll be called for a foul. We're going to say Richmond wasn't shooting or on the floor. It looks like on the floor, so just a new 20 on the shot clock. Just the first on Foster. No players above three personal fouls. Witten, Heen with one, Heen with none, rather, and then three with Huey and Williams who are on the bench. And Furman typically does a really good job of not not fouling. Teams don't really get to the free throw line against Furman. They're only allowing 26% of the points for opposing teams to come for the free throw line. So they do a good job of playing solid defense, but without fouling and in allowing teams to get to the free throw line.
picks with the basketball. A chore with the screen up top. You see Furman trying to force everything down low. Back out Jones, step back, open look on the way, got it. Rylan Jones with his first three. Now you see the Bulldogs, you expect it. We said over 40% as a team. They're not going to go over nine to get to the half. They've already hit four in this second half. Ball set up to Foster. Now it's a three on one break. He'll stop, pop, knock it down. They're going to say his foot was on the line, so just a two, but it's an eight point game. Both teams, this is the offense as you expected to see coming into the night. It's starting, obviously, the pace is there, but the scoring is starting to pick up as guys are some, making some shots there, and that's one of the toughest shots, though, for Marcus Foster when your foot is on the line right there. P.J. Smith getting called for the hack. It's going to be on the floor, but Furman fouls adding up. we will be Sanford basketball when we come back. It's a good one in the Southern Conference. Furman hanging on to an eight-point lead in Greenville. Oh, it's just with one. I don't think Sanford, even though they're heating up from, from outside, as you would expect, still needs to run the offense through a chore, chore. They do. Yes, no question about it. I mean, he's the heart and soul of this team right now. Walls did everything, trying to keep it up. It's going to be tipped out of bounds, and it's going to say Sanford basketball. He doesn't like the call. Walls was... 6'5 freshman out of Knoxville, and Chore got a hand on it. He'll stay with the Bulldogs with 20 on the shot clock. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see just from a stamina standpoint with a Chore, a Chore. He seems to be laboring at times, just playing a lot of minutes and a high level minutes also. Okay, what? Well, Walls did everything except make the layup, and then Nathan Johnson's going to get called for the reach in. Oh, Richie not happy with some of those no calls down low, especially when his team's getting banged up by the whistle. Yeah, and Will Howard's coming over there to talk to him and make sure they understand each other and communicating. And, yes, we know there can be a little bit of heated conversations but, between refs and coaches. But Nice job, though, about yeah. letting them communicate and go. Right. And now beating the pressure sends it up to Heen. See what, Garrett Heen's done a nice job being there, reliable, but not forcing anything offensively, trying to get the ball into those offensive playmakers. McGee's has it top of the key down low to Williams who finishes with the left hand. Alex Williams in double figures with the left. Yeah, that's what we saw in that game against Western Carolina. Just Alex Williams just can take over a game, especially from the inside. Shore going for the three. He's over two from long range. Foster had it underneath. Had it whacked away. Jump ball will be firm in possession, but it'll go to the alternating arrow. Tell you what, Bulldogs, every time Furman grabs the board, hands coming in. They do such a good job of not only getting their hands in the passing lanes, deflecting balls, obviously with the pressure that they put on you, but also once guards or big men bring the ball down, Sanford does a really good job of converging and multiple guys trying to tie the opposing players up. Here comes the word up to Alex Williams. Up to Keen, who's... Going to slow it down for him. A 10-point game, 10 and a half to go. You're in a battle with two of the top teams of the conference. Whit to the corner, Alex Williams. Foot three, yes. He lets it go right in the ear of the Bulldogs defender. And ears are ringing here in Greenville. As Furman's 13 point points in only 17 minutes of action. A little bit of foul trouble for Alex Williams. He has three, and he'll be in there after the timeout. Bulldog basketball. Approaching the midway point of this second half, the largest lead of the afternoon or the evening, rather, is Furman trying to stop this nation's leading 17-game winning streak for the Bulldogs. There'll be a whistle off the ball. Tim Comer coming in, calling it against the Palace. J.P. Pagis, his second personal. It'll be two shots coming up at the line. And now Josh Holloway is a guy for Samford, again, out of Oak Hill Prep Academy. So obviously a story program, but he reminds me a lot of J.P. Pagis. And obviously J.P. Pagis has been able to elevate his game to a different level. But I do think that Josh Holloway, he has some of those characteristics that he could be a guy that give him some time. He could be somebody that you're going to be talking about in the Southern Conference. Stanton Cray at the table to check in if Holloway can knock down the second free throw. And he can't. Rare two miss for Holloway from the line. Bulldog team very good from the free throw line. And now the Paladins have it a chance to extend the lead.
Foster with the basketball over to Heen. Look at the heavy ball pressure. Williams down low, kicks it to the corner. Wick, can he knock it down? No, too strong. Weak side rebound to Chore. Nice job on the weak side rebound. Rebounds 35 28 in favor of the Paladins. A chore has it stripped away, gets it back. Underneath, working against Heen with it is Holloway. Corner three, Johnson, yes. Big shot right in front of the Bulldog bench, and it's back to a 10 point game. And Austin up to win, and he's bumped. Getting late is Lucas Walls and the sarcastic crowd approval as they think the crowd here, the strike cut and helping him out. And Nathan Johnson, who just hit that three for Stanford, he's not a guy who's unfamiliar with play in the Southern Conference. Started 16 games last year for Sanford and averaging 19 minutes per game. So this guy who has some experience and he's known to be able to hit some big three-pointer shooting 41% from beyond, beyond the arc this season. McGee's looking to answer on the way. That's back for him. Rebound taken down by Johnson. Here's a chance for the Bulldogs to try to get back into single digits. Still plenty of time. Nine to go. But sure, five out right now for the Bulldogs. Trying to hit another one as Johnson, he does. Back to back, three pointers by Johnson. And all of a sudden, it's a seven point game down from 13. As tell you what, Coach Ritchie said, hey, you, you let him hit back to back. Williams going all the way down, and he gets it off the glass and then Alex Williams. Yeah, now it's an opportunity for Furman. Got to close out on those perimeter defensive opportunities right there. As you see, Nathan Johnson. Off, it's a foul. And Chor Chor being aggressive right there. But Garrett Heen, talk about an experienced guy, a veteran guy. And great job by Garrett Heen to be able to make sure to keep a Chor Chor in front of him. And that's one of those things where you can have a scenario where you don't have to be in a locked position, your feet set. You can be moving technically. That's the miscon still get misconception people say. Yeah. Legal guarding position is That's what they right. say, right? Get yes. down. So back to a nine-point game. Paladin basketball getting close to the under eight media timeout. Williams. Foster thought about a three. He wants to go down against the chore. Sends it over to Smith. Five on the shot clock to the corner. Williams. Tough three on the way. No. Rebound battle for out of bounds. It should be firm and ball and it is Just Shy of this eight-minute media timeout. They what this Furman team coach Richie saying we got to have our best shooter shoot Meaning that hey, a lot of people may get open looks But you got to make sure the guys that are taking the shots are the one with the higher percentage That's what Adam run through the SoCon a year ago beat Virginia in the first round and of course This is the Furman team folks thought they might have seen earlier in the season when the injuries were coming Yes, and that's why it's so critical to have Marcus Foster in this lineup. And just from a perspective, other players that have missed time for Furman this season. So this is not just about Marcus Foster missing time. Other guys have missed time also. Right on cue, Marcus Foster. Furman responds again, and it's back to a 12-point game. Furman now 11 of 24 from long range. Johnson back with it. He's hit two in a row. Stanton McCray, who took the lid off the basket in that first half, and he'll throw it out of bounds on the defense, and it'll take us to the under eight. Perimeter defense, but also just the physicality that Furman has been able to exude here in this game. So plenty of time for the Bulldogs, seven and a half minutes, especially with how hot they can get from beyond the arc, but they're gonna have to start getting some stops. Both teams with 15 turnovers, even on that front. Heen has it top of the key over to Foster, quarter three on the way, a bit too strong. And, and Alex Williams, there's the whistle, his fourth personal, and it's going to be a one and one. So bigger than the one and one is maybe the fourth personal, Alex Williams, and he leans back. You can tell he's a little frustrated and know that for all intents and purposes, a ticky-tack foul based on some of the physicality that we've talked about and how this game has been officiated and how it's been played out. And so that's a big loss right now for Alex Williams going to the bench. Now, you do have an opportunity. You don't. You have some guys that can come in and can still be contributors. But the way Alex Williams has been playing over the past several games, coming off of a first career double-double for him, so it's a tough loss for Furman to have him on the bench. Johnson at the line shoots just 62% from the charity strike, big front end of a one and one, and he rattles it home. And probably how this 
He's going to go for Williams, and when Bob Ritchie puts him back in the basketball game, maybe dictated by can the Bulldog, will the Bulldogs cut the lead? And time and score are obviously going to be a factor when Williams goes out. So out at 7 12, up 12. We'll see when he comes back as both knocked down by the Bulldogs. Ten point game. And there's also an aspect that you get to a certain point in your career, you've got to be able to learn how to play with three or four fouls. And maybe Alex Williams is getting to that point where he's got to be able to understand how to do that. Berman's led by as many as 13. The Bulldogs by four. That was at the beginning of the game, four nothing. What into the lane, hesitates. Tell you what, he almost drew the pass, faked it, and then laid it off the glass and in. Carter Witt now has four. Yeah, and that's the confidence that Carter Witt has this season. Last season, I don't know if Carter would have been able to have the confidence to take it in and attack the rim like he did. Now it's George Shore gets fouled. He'll go to the line for two. That foul going against the Paladins, Ben Vanderwall, the 6'7 sophomore at Elmhurst, Illinois. Two shots for a George Shore. His first in the shooting foul, but it Eight team foul, but of course on the shot, we'll give him two. It looks like he's trying to stretch out. What is that left leg? Maybe a left hamstring? Yeah, he's having some problems earlier, and I think the pace of this game and how much he's been You playing, mentioned his minutes. Yes, he's been playing a lot of minutes, and this is a guy who doesn't play a whole lot of minutes. He's only averaging 20 minutes per game, so right now this is rare for him to be in this situation where he's playing so 29 much. minutes. Now. Yes, and so you have to factor that into this game right now. There he misses them both. Bulldogs now just three of eight from the line from his four of seven. Twelve point lead with the basketball. Furman going to take their time as he has it poked away. A chore chore on the breakout, and he's going to slow it down. And all of a sudden, a ten point game on the turnover. Well, anytime you have the ball in your hands, you're not tired anymore. And we can see a chore chore right there. Didn't look like he was hurt tired, whatever, he was able to take that strong to the rim. Stanton McCray getting called on the hand shot. Take a look, one-handed right-hand jam, a chore chore. He says, what cramps? Coming right in your living room. Wouldn't it be nice, Richmond, you just want to do that one time? <laughs> you know? I do that quite a bit. Yeah, I see It's just in my dream. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bulldogs still want to put some pressure on. <laughs> You know, regulation goal is key. We'll get Jeff Schetzel and the whole crew out for a dunk contest, see what would happen. Get a little trampoline in front. Pegues spins it back out to Heen. Shot clock now down to single digits. Went working against a chore. Big mismatch there from Size out to Smith. Pump fakes, long two on the way. Yes, P.J. Smith he doesn't settle for the three. He gets into double digits with 11 now. Quickly back the other way and Hey, what? Josh Holloway just banging his way down the lane. It's going to be two shots after the Furman foul. As we talked about, you talked about physical. We've seen a lot of bodies getting hit right now. And uh, you can see Josh Holloway taking it hard. P.J. Smith with the foul. And guys following. We saw Garrett Heen earlier on this other side of the court. It seemed like he got banged up. And maybe he pulled a hamstring also. So there's all types of physicality going on right now. And, again, the pace is a sprinter's pace right now for both of these teams. Maybe not necessarily on the score and what we're typically used to seeing for both of these teams, but they are getting up and down the court. Bulldogs hurting themselves from the line. With one more upcoming, and if they can creep back with the clock stop, that would be ideal for the Bulldogs. Off the mark, loose ball, he has it. Double team comes, gets it out to P.J. Smith. So right now, Richmond, the Bulldogs are going to have to knock down their free throws. Unusual for this team, above 74% now, just three of nine from the line. And Furman continues a little clock. Sanford in the midst of a 17-game winning streak, best in the country. Foster, yes, Marcus Foster with 17. He leads all Paladins, and the 14-point lead the largest as we go under five. Yeah, and that was just a scenario of Marcus Foster said, I'm taking over right here on this possession and finish strong. Step back three, air ball. Weak side rebound taken down by Jones. Steps back to a chore. Double team. He's working against Heen. Big fella sends it to the corner. 
Pump fake, Jones, shot clock at eight. Stanton McCray, big shot, Stanton McCray, and all of a sudden, don't go away, just an 11 point game. Bulldogs aren't gonna go away lightly. They know how to win. There's a reason why they've been able to win 17 games in a row, and as you talked about, the nation's longest winning streak, because they can make big shots. We've seen some other teams have some success against Sanford, but Sanford's been able to make the big shots down the stretch, and they're trying to do that here in Timmins Arena. Foster swatted away by a chore. Allen is one of the block. Jones, no call. I think Furman's going to take. Thought he said a 30 second timeout, but both teams are going to go to the benches. We'll see what they're going to take a look at. Will Howard is saying Furman does call a 30 second timeout for Sanford. Hitting for me on the arm, you have to make sure that you're still connected, as we talked about on defense, rotating properly and then closing out there defensively, not allowing Sanford some of these easy shots. After the timeout, Foster gets it right side. Five to shoot. Witt, one on one, top of the key. He's going to have to throw one up. Carter Witt contains it, six points, none bigger than that. Out of the timeout, executes, and then. A chore doesn't look. Sanford throws it away for the 17th time. Big swing there coming out of that timeout. Richmond, take another look at Carter Witt. Yeah, and Carter Witt right here. Talking about, again, confidence. And we talk about when you have a shot blocker, a rim protector like a chore, chore can be, you go straight into him, body to body. Don't fall away. And nice job by Carter Witt being able to do just that. Staff saying it's really coming to his own. Big part of this team. Smith hasn't knocked out of bounds and stay with the Palace. It's a 17 to shoot. Both teams shooting the basketball better in this second half. Furman near 50% from the field. The Bulldogs now near the mid 40s. We're saying this Furman defense holding the nation's leading team over 90 points a game right now at 56 points with three and a half to go. McGee, step back. Halfway down and pops out. That could have done it. Sanford still battling other instances at the Stanton McCray. Stanton McCray, I know, tough shot, but you may want to try to knock him down from behind the arc. Instead, Foster tries to save it, and he does. And if you're Furman, you want to start using some clock here as we go toward three to play. Yeah, still push your offense, but you don't have to run it at the pace that you typically do. And A careless you. pass. On the run out, Stanton McCray lays it in in this 11 point game. That's the second run out at the top of the key and a timeout taken by Sanford. And it's those unforced errors that happen, especially in. Berman with the basketball. Heavy pressure by this Bulldog defense. Now with 25 seconds, Foster going to go up and be fouled. And there's the decision. Do you try to run a clock if you're Furman, or do you want to go down low and there Foster will go to the line? Well, right there, you were able to break the press. And you, when you have Marcus Foster on the low block, nice job by Carter Whip being able to find Marcus Foster. you got to take advantage of that every opportunity you can, regardless of how much time it's going to take off the clock, because Marcus Foster is such a good, strong finisher. Foster knocks down the first. One more upcoming. Alex Williams, of course, in there with those four fouls. You may see Garrett Heen come in a little potential offense for defense. And let's see who comes out. That's exactly what's going to happen. Interesting move right there with Bucky McMillan taking AJ Stanton McCray out, especially if you need him there on the offensive side if you're Sanford. Two forty to go, thirteen point game. Bulldogs trying to get a shot. It's walls. Off the mark, Pegues grabs the board, and now with 2.30 to go, Pegues is going to try to beat the pressure, and imagine then Furman's going to slow it down. 
Double team come, gets it to Pagese near the diamond F, and Bob Ritchie telling him to spread things out. Pagese down the lane, he's mugged, and it'll be two shots for Pagese. Uses about 20 seconds on the shot clock. And in these type of situations, when you're wanting to be able to use a little bit of clock, but you got to be able to handle the pressure, you're going to give it to J.P. Pagese, because there's one guy on this team that he can handle that type of pressure, handle the ball, and be able to penetrate and attack the rim now, have an opportunity to try to extend this lead from the free throw line. Allen is efficient from the line. 7 of 11 relatively. Bulldogs had a chance from the free throw line. We mentioned how well they shoot from both behind the arc and the line. Just 3 of 10. And Sanford had a couple opportunities front end of 1 of 1 and then some two shot fouls when it was about a nine point game. Wasn't able to capitalize. Case makes them both. And it's a 15 point game, which is Furman's largest. And we see a Chora Chora coming out of the game. Zach Loveday comes in, the 7 foot Baylor transfer who was part of that national championship team with with Baylor played limited minutes, but still part of that championship team. And again, could stamina be part of the scenario playing out for some of these Sanford Bulldogs? Nice pushback on the offensive board, 13 point game, 150 to go. Over to Foster, he's gonna take a three on the way. Yes, about to say it's an ill advised shot, but if you're wide open, I don't think anybody minds it. It's a 16 point game, Marcus Foster. Have yourself a night. Now 22. Responded on the other end. Now for Stanford, you really got to try to start forcing the turnover. Do you, do you play the foul game yet with 13-point game? 125 to go. Or are you going to try to get the T.O.? Well, I think it's an interesting move. Bucky McMillan taking out a chore, a chore, taking out A.J. Stanton McRae, taking out some of his best offensive players here in the last under two minutes. And again, no were these guys just tired and not able to continue at the level that he wanted? Ball sent up quickly to Jones as the crowd starts to sense it. Sent to the corner, three on the way, rattles home, yes. Leopard makes it a 10-point game with 57 seconds to go, and that's going to be the seventh Bulldog foul, so a one and one on the other end. And Chandler Leopard is a guy, again, he played SEC level transfer from Auburn, so he can hit some of these three-pointers, and we've talked about it. Sanford can get hot. Now, obviously, they're running out of time here against the Paladins as J.P. Pagese heads to the free-throw line. One and one at the line for Pagese, who's just knocked down two and makes the front end. Close games around the Southern Conference tonight with three seconds to go. Western Carolina and UNC Greensboro and Colorway are tied, and in Charleston, it's the Citadel with a one-point lead over Mercer with 40 seconds to go. And then in Lexington, how about this? ETSU a 74-73 win over VMI. The only game that hasn't been too close is Walford being handled by Chattanooga by 14 in Spartanburg. So Furman will go. They'll go down 85 to take on the rival Walford Carrier Saturday night, and that layup is easy by Johnson. 10-point game, about a 15-second differential in the shot clock and game clock, and the Paladins set to break a 17-game winning streak for the Bulldogs. And third straight win for Furman against a very good Sanford program who will be right there at the top of the conference come into the year. Yeah. Over the past nine seasons, the Paladins have only lost eight times here in Timmins Arena. So this is a very difficult place to play and showcasing it once again. And I think Timmins Arena is part of the reason why the Paladins are going to pick up this victory. Shot clock violation as it was almost picked off, but instead of ruled not possession. So with 14 seconds to go, it'll be Sanford basketball, 10 point game. Richmond all around, it was a, a highly contested basketball game. The score got up to a higher level, but I think it's the Furman defense that maybe was the difference in this ball game. That's the story of the game. It's the Furman defense and how they've been able to slow down this high octane offense from the Sanford Bulldogs and do it in a way that forced them to have difficult shots and didn't allow them to get into their offensive rhythm. Ball poked away and Furman gonna dribble it out. Final seconds run off and the Paladins break the 17 game winning streak with a 78-68 win. Bob Ritchie is 150.